morning, dear friends. Welcome to the morning show. I'm so pleased that you all are with me. Uh, today is Monday, April 3rd. I cannot believe uh, that we're in April already, but here we are. Um, I'm so thrilled to be coming to you from the new chapel. Oh my gosh, I could not have chosen a more beautiful background. Um, I know that many of you were just so thrilled to see this stained glass when we went through for Dusty Shoes on Friday. Um, I'm also pleased that Chaplain Fred Arzola is with me this morning to talk to us a little bit about the chapel and about Holy Week and some things coming up. So uh, stay tuned for that. But first, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the week. Um, so this week, I hope that you're tuning in right now. I'm sure that the morning show is the highlight of your day. Uh, so I hope that, that you're with us now at 8.30 and then that you will be joining us at one o'clock in the Mirfield room. So today we have Dr. Rick Herman coming to us to talk about uh, foreign policy in the Middle East. And I wanna tell you a little bit about Rick. I'm gonna pull up his, his bio here so that I don't goof it. So uh, Rick Herman is an emeritus faculty member from The Ohio State University. Um, and when he was at OSU, he was the director of the Mershon Center of International Security Studies. His specialties are international relations, international security, and political psychology. That's going to be a really good one this afternoon. I hope that you will join us. Um, we're so grateful to Don Trotier, who made arrangements for Rick to join us. So I, I hope that you'll come for that. Um, then later this afternoon at 2.30, we are starting a new lifelong learning class. Uh, Brad Bradshaw is gonna be with us and we are gonna do Reading Shakespeare Aloud. And so we have several folks already signed up. I know they're gonna have a great time. What I wanna tell you about that is that you don't have to have experience reading and you don't have to understand Shakespeare in order to come to that class. That's why Brad is here. We're gonna read it aloud and then we're gonna talk about maybe what it means, what the jokes are, that sort of thing. So this is really for anybody, and it's going to be super fun. Uh, we chose a really lighthearted play, Much Ado About Nothing. Um, you don't have to bring anything with you. Uh, I have ordered books for that class, so everybody who comes to participate will receive a book. Um, it's really going to be a good time. He's going to be with us six weeks. So I hope that you'll come and check that out. Come today. Maybe you decide it's not for you, that's okay, but I would, I would love to see you even if you just come today. On Tuesday, our very own Mikey Kostorp is gonna be talking about fitness wearables uh, in the Mirfield room. So he's gonna be talking to you about those Fitbits and Apple Watches and all of that good stuff and the ways that they can monitor your health and activity level. Uh, that's going to be really good. I know Mikey's been working on that a long time. I hope that you will come and join us for that. Uh, then later that afternoon, we are going to be going to Mexico. That is our live wowsitude for the month. We're going to Mexico City and we are going to have some Mexican treats for that should be fun. I'm voting for tacos, Stacy's voting for churros. I don't know where we're gonna end up, but there will be something good to eat at the Mexico City Wowsitude. Um, I didn't mention that Monday and Tuesday, there are also some opportunities for some spring themed um, art classes in the Creative Arts Center with Ann Vega. I hope that you'll check those out. Again, everyone is welcome. Uh, then we will be on Wednesday. Uh, Stacy is going to be teaching origami at 10 a.m. in the Creative Arts Center. And I know that, that that class right now is full, so it looks like that's something we may have to think about offering again, uh, which we can certainly think about doing that. You can see Stacy's work all over the building right now. I saw two pieces of origami uh, sitting at Michelle's desk this morning. Uh, and then later that afternoon, we're gonna have the High Street Stompers with us, which is gonna just be some great live music. They are coordinated by Sid, Sid Townsend, who is often here with Milo Menino. Um, it's just gonna be some wonderful, upbeat, uh, great music. So I hope that you'll come later that afternoon by request. We have a replay of A Man Called Otto. I know that we love Tom Hanks. Uh, that's a real feel-good film, so if you haven't seen it yet, please come. We'd love to see you for that. Also, if you're, if you're not into the movie, join Lauren Koenig for walking practice for the 5K that afternoon. Thursday, 
we are going to be doing shuttles to Hidaka for cherry blossoms. Uh, so hopefully, and we will check in with our friends at Hidaka this week to make sure, but hopefully the cherry blossoms are going to be in bloom by Thursday. And so we're going to take uh, three different shuttles over there to see the cherry blossoms. Um, if, if one of the shuttles is full, I don't believe that they're all full. So, so take, a, take a look and maybe, maybe you can't go at 10, but maybe you could go at 1020 or 1040. Um, we'd certainly love to have you for that. Uh, then that afternoon, we are showing Oscar-winning short films. So that one was by special request. We had several who wanted to see The Elephant Whisperers, uh, which was the film that won for documentary short. And then we also decided to tack on the film that won for animated short. Uh, so we have, have located those and are excited to, to show those to you on Thursday. Uh, our Otterbein Lifelong Learning that day will be about molecular medicine. Uh, if you're interested in logging in on your own device to the Zoom Otterbein Lifelong Learning, please sign up on Touchtown. That's my cue to send you the connection link. On Friday, oh, I'm sorry, on Thursday there is a service. Uh, that evening, Fred is going to talk to us about that. It's Monday, Thursday. Friday, we are going to be doing Out to Breakfast. The ladies are going to Kona Craft Kitchen, which if you have a chance to look at the menu, it looks really yummy. And the men are going to go to the new First Watch. That one has been a request for many, so we'll be excited to go there. I realize that Out to Breakfast on Good Friday is an unusual fit. For whatever reason, this month was really tight on Fridays. We have ballet and CSO, and so we kind of put it where we could. Uh, so we're excited to see you um, to go out to breakfast. Uh, that day later, there is a Good Friday service and trivia. And then on Saturday, I will be back with you. The Dublin Kaufman High School Piano Club is going to be here. And so my understanding is that there are about 10 of them. Some of them are beginners and some of them have been playing their whole lives. Uh, so they're going to join us and play some special pieces for us. Uh, and we'll be excited to, to have them. Um, those of you who have seen me on Saturdays know that I usually have my four-year-old daughter with me, uh, and, and I will this coming Saturday because she will have just gotten out of gymnastics. So we will rush over here and she will have way too much energy, uh, but it's gonna be really fun. So I hope that you'll join us on Saturday. Whew, busy week, right? Uh, lots of wonderful things going on. Give me just a moment, I'm gonna tell you about the weather. So it's going to be gorgeous, we hope, we, we really hope. It's, it's chilly right now, um, but it looks like um, that we are going to have some sunshine kind of later in the week. I am praying that the rain that's predicted for Tuesday and Wednesday is going to go away. So, so here's your weather report. Sunshine all week. Let's see. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, before I connect to Chaplain Fred, I thought that I would uh, tell you a chapel-appropriate Easter joke. Uh, what is it that that bunny rabbits say before they eat? Let us pray. I know you're all laughing, not to worry. Friends, I'm so pleased that Chaplain Fred Arzola is with us this morning. Thanks so much, Fred, for being How here. How are you? Doing great. Good. Yeah. Thank you for having me today. Oh, we're so pleased to have you. And in this gorgeous new space, we are all so excited to be here and use it. I know. Isn't this beautiful? It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I want to say a little bit about the chapel. First, I want to point out that on the side are two doors here, and these doors will be closed. That's really the beginning of Rowan House. Um, the chapel is going to be used by the community mm -hmm. um, and probably primarily by the independent living residents. Now that's that's maybe not the perception that, that it's to be used primarily by independent living residents. Right, I think maybe some people thought that it was just going to use uh, in the memory care yeah. area, but it's really used by the whole community. Brilliant. Residents, associates, family, and the space is going to be open 24 hours a day for prayer and for meditation. There'll be certain times where there'll be scheduled events. Okay. For example, Tuesday afternoons, we're gonna move our Bible study here. Uh, we're gonna start a Thursday at 4 p.m. early evening prayer service from like 4 to 4.20. Okay. And then as you know, we have about 70 to 80 Muslim associates yes. who work here between the culinary area and the clinical area and the home health care area. Uh, part-time and full-time. And so on Fridays from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., 
we're going to schedule a dedicated space for Muslim prayer. Wonderful. Yeah, we've established a really close relationship with uh, Nor Islamic Cultural Center. Okay. And so they're sending people over to lead the prayer. Oh, how lovely. That's going to be great. Yeah. And yeah. other than that, it's an open space for people just to come and pray and to meditate. Okay. As you can see here, we have a, a few holy books. We have a Christian prayer book. We have a Bible. We have a Torah. Um, and these are all large print because I need uh, large print. Absolutely. Um, we have Qurans here, which are donated by uh, Nor Islamic Cultural Center. Okay. And as I see the Torah here, we want to wish our Jewish residents a happy Passover. Oh, fantastic. This, this week, right, which is a commemoration of the liberation of the Israelites from Egypt. And the highlight of that, of course, is the gathering of the community for the celebration of the Seder meal, where they re retell the story and discuss the story of, uh, of that liberation, uh, which okay. is found in the book of Exodus. So again, just a happy uh, Passover to all our Jewish residents and associates and family members. Great, fantastic. I want to highlight also here, the center of our chapel is the stained glass which is really beautiful. I came at the tail end of this. Um, this was designed by our own Andy Howling, and it seems like his fingerprints are all over uh, this place, yes. you know? Yes, yes. And um, this is a beautiful, and it's interesting because I had the privilege of joining him and uh, Laura Hill, who provided a lot of technical advice as well. Oh, great. When they met with Franklin Glass, and it was fascinating to see and to be in the discussion between the designer and the window designers and creators about this. And Franklin Glass is just an amazing place. They must have like a hundred different blues and a hundred oh different oranges and a hundred different browns and pinks and it's just wonderful. And it's interesting how Andy would explain how he started out with a small design and listening to people and it was eventually blown up to full scale. Uh -huh. And then you have this. And what makes this, I think, unique is also that it's a, it's a three-part stained glass. It's not just one large uh, stained glass window. So I think that makes it unique. And when I first heard about it, I thought it was going to be there on the window. But yeah. this is an interior stained glass window, so it has special lighting behind it okay. to make it look beautiful all the time. This was, there was a gift by Rosemary Belt, who was a resident here, who gave the gift and the donation to have this made. So we're very grateful for her. Absolutely. And then over here on this side is a pew that was donated by um, Ruth Foster. Oh, and that's isn't that, wonderful. Isn't that, that's beautiful. And it's so perfect, right? Right next to the, right under the, uh, the window there. It fits perfectly. Um, I know that there are some people upstairs that are upset that the pew was moved, right? Because they enjoyed sitting there. But as she said yesterday during worship, this is really where it was meant to be. Oh, good. And so That's we're really wonderful. grateful to her and to Rosemary for their generosity. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm gonna come during the day just to visit this beautiful window. It is beautiful, so isn't lovely. it amazing? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Now, this is a special week in spiritual care. You have some things going on, some special services. Do you want to tell us about those? Yes. Yeah, so as you know, Holy Week is perhaps the most solemn week in the Christian tradition. Yes. Um, it commemorates uh, Jesus' last week on earth. And so it began yesterday with Palm Sunday, which is uh, commemorates and, and, uh, when Jesus entered Jerusalem. And then uh, on Thursday, we celebrate what's called Maundy Thursday or Holy Thursday, which is the commemoration of Jesus' last meal with his friends, with the apostles. It's also the day that he instituted a communion, right? When he celebrated that, he changed, speaking of Passover, he changed that Passover meal a little bit. And he said, do this in remembrance of me, which is now the Christian tradition. Yeah. Um, and so we're having a service, a beautiful service that evening at 7 p.m. And then on Friday, it's Good Friday, uh, which is the commemoration of uh, Jesus' crucifixion and death. So which may be the most solemn day of this most solemn week. Yes. And so there's a service at 1 p.m. Um, as well to just 
reflect further on that and, and just the sacrifice that he made um, for for us. And then of course Sunday is our is our regular two thirty service. So we have a full week of services um, here at Friendship Village, and so I'm really excited about that. Fantastic, yeah. friends! We hope that you will join us for those celebrations. We would love to see you. Thank you so much, Chaplain Fred, for joining us. We love it. We're Thank so you. glad to Thank have you. you. Uh, and I think that's just it. So have a wonderful week, and we will see you next Monday. So long. Bye.